you'd want a consistency in your throw in or what the throw is likely to be from front, middle or back. Boy, so again to the, the upper body um, sort of warm up, which from a hooking point of view, you know, obviously warming up the shoulders, the triceps, and then obviously with scrummaging as well, make sure that the shoulders, the lats are all, uh, all switched on. Especially with me, I've had a, a couple of nerve issues in the past, so it takes a little bit longer to, to switch on these days. So I always do a bit of a circuit, which uh, for me would be some lat raises, side lat raises, half a dozen so of them, into a quick bicep curl. Just fires them up there. And then to some scaption bounces, which just switches on everything around the back and the shoulder. Make sure when you're going into collisions or your shoulders under a bit of strain from scrummaging. And then obviously when you throw when you're warmed up that uh, all the little muscles in there working. So you do normally do a circuit of three, three times six, three times ten of that. And then it'd be into more of the, some tricep work and, and some pec, pec warmers, which obviously from a a throw in is make sure your, your pecs opened up so you can get uh, full range in your throws and when you're scrummaging everything's nice and warm and you can keep it all tight there. Warm up the side of the pec there and the, on the front of the shoulder. This might be a bit heavy for me today but a bit of tricep work and, and just to warm them up. And that's sort of a throw in action as well which keeps everything strong and fired up ready to go. And then to more of a dynamic um, sort of switch on then into your in, in and out which just uh, Make sure everything's switched on. So when you're, you're thrown into a sort of an awkward angle and into something that you're you're switched on, and your muscles and tendons and ligaments, everything can deal with it. So be something similar, then three to ten, uh, a rotation on that. Then. So obviously every every hook is different. Uh, others, somebody's got massive hands. You got someone like Ross Ford, or there's an Duplessis who's got really big hands. Um, I think the ideal would be the to be able to hold the ball in a similar sort of position, but for me personally, I I got smaller hands, so I got one one towards the back of the ball, which is normally my right hand, which is the the one that generates the power, and obviously my left hand, which is slightly further forward and is, is more of the guiding hand. Then I think one of the big guides for me is is having the um, the valve um, towards my right hand. But I don't know whether that's just a bit of a superstition with me, but it is a bit of a guide, so I I always tend to have my little finger on or just after the valve. So it, it just gives me a little bit of a guide then to, to where my hand placement is on the ball. One of the biggest issues I probably have had over the years is, is keeping the ball straight and fly through the air. So the big focus for me is once, once I'm set, hand towards the tail, one towards the middle of the ball, is when my hands are behind my head, is making sure that the, the ball Pretty, pretty straight on release. So I'll always come back pretty at an angle, but as long as the ball comes out flat, the nose down, pointed forward, and, uh, and comes out straight, I'm, I'm pretty good. So that's always been the, the big work on for me over the years, is, is due to not having big-ish hands. I can't, uh, be keeping the ball coming out of my hands straight. So um, that's one big work on for me, and luckily I don't get too many not straight, unless we're playing in the wind and rain.